Have you ever imagined walking through a door and going somewhere utterly unexpected? Well, I attempted to speedrun Pokemon White 2 as a warp randomizer by beating every gym and Elite 4 in order to beat this challenge. All credit goes towards Point Crow and if you like the content, make sure you subscribe. And this is my journey. We start our journey by choosing Rosa as our trainer. We name her Light and we name our rival after Hugh. We go start off by talking to our mother who gives us a magma stone in this where we can get a Heatran and also she gives us the Lunar Wing to get Cresselia. These two will be really important for the future battles that are ahead of us in, uh, such as the gyms and Elite Fours. We go off to the balcony to talk to Bianca, get our starter who is Tepig and now it's time to battle our rival Hugh. Hugh went pretty easily. After a few tackles we managed to dig down the Oshawa and we win quite easily. We get our pair of running shoes and now it's time to go to our first warp. The first warp we take is the bottom left house in Aspersia City which takes us to the nice beach in Route 13. This is where we'll start marking our location so we can keep track if we ever wanted to come back over here. This is an example of me tracking the Aspersia City to the Route 13 warp we were just in and I do this for any other warp that I try to find. We move on by going towards this next area in Aspersia which leads us to the Plasma Frigate. The Plasma Frigate has a total of 8 warps that we can go to so this is a massive location to find early on. I decided it's best if we go back to Aspersia and create our foundation of warps that we can use in the future. I go into the gym which leads us to Route 5 next to Full City Bridge and this doesn't really have many warps, but uh, I decided we should just go back into the Pokemon Center and explore our next warp. I land near the daycare where usually there's a lot of warps here. You've got the warp inside the daycare, you have Strighton City which has a bunch of different warps, but then again, I still need to find all my foundation warps in this Spursha before I start exploring everywhere else. So I decided to go to the top right house in this Spursha which leads us to a dead end with a guy with black glasses and he looks like a bit of a bodyguard. So I decide to leave him alone and go over to the connector which leads me to Route 4. Although this area has a lot of warps, I decide it's best if we get a high level Pokemon. So we go back towards the beach where we can go over to the grass and we counter a level 35 Driftblim. Now this is not as high level as I wanted, usually you want around level 50s to carry you through most of the sections of the game, however I attempted to still catch it, but unfortunately I got critted, didn't catch the Drift Blim, and I was blacked out. I heal my Pokemon at an unknown Pokemon Center and I go out and I'm left at a Cumula Town where I don't really know what warps are here, so I start exploring and I decide to go to the house next to us. I land myself in the beautiful city of Nambasa and I decide it's best if we go to the Pokemon Center because we need to start somewhere and start actually exploring different locations. Although I could explore a bit more of Accumula Town, it's best if we find a new location. And here we did, we found the legendary spot of Heatran. Since we got the Magma Stone from our mother earlier on in the game, we can actually encounter Heatran. Since I've only got a Tepic, I decided to make a safe state so I can encounter the Heatran multiple times. I tried to catch him a first Pokeball, but with legendary odds and being at level 68 with full HP, the chances of me catching it were next to nothing. And after 30 minute mark, I decided it's best to leave Heatran alone and come back when we got better Pokeballs. I return back to Nambasa City and go to the house next to the Pokemon Center. We land over at Twist Mountain. Now, Twist Mountain has a lot of different warps. This warp unfortunately has a one way gap and I can't really go anywhere else apart from it. So I decide to go to the house above the Pokemon Center, the land of Driftwell City with the goated music. As this was a one way to Driftwell, I go back to Nambasa and head to the stadium, which leads me to the north of the Plasma Frigate. On the other stadium, I go to Celestial Towers. I wasn't sure how to mark the Celestial Towers because it had just one area that I could do. So I labelled it as the entrance, which might have been a mistake. Either way, I head to the Music Hall, which coincidentally led me to the Plasma Frigate, which we had already seen earlier in Nimbasa City. So I decided to go to the West Connector, 
And this led us to the Castalia City, which has a lot of different warps that we can explore. One of which we went directly south as we entered, and we accidentally interrupt our young family's home, where we have to do a quiz show now. Um, I did not think they would be hosting this, but we entered the word chit chat as one of our responses, and people were disappointed that I got it wrong. So, as a consolation prize, I got a paralysis heal so I can move on ahead from this place where I didn't need to be, and I can mark it off as a different warp point. We head over to the east of Castalia City, and as we go through Twist Mountain, we head ourselves to Victory Road. This part of Victory Road has a rival battle awaiting us, and this rival battle is really difficult because as for our level 6 Tepig, we couldn't really do much and Unfazant took us off. So we head back over to Accumula Town as our last Pokemon Center, and we decided to check our next warp there. So we go to the top right house in Akimura Town, and it leads us to Verbank City. But I wanted to explore the rest of Akimura Town, so the Pokemon Center was left to explore. The Pokemon Center led us to Joint Avenue. Joint Avenue has like two different warps, but even then, I still wanted to go back and explore the last house in Akimura Town, which led us to the first gym. Before we wanted to battle the gym, we wanted to get a new encounter. So we found this Herdia at level 56, just south of Accumula Town, and we catch him with quite ease. With a newly caught Herdia, we can actually battle the gym. Since the gym is pretty low level, we can pretty much sweep with our Herdia. So we go through the school, and this did not lead us to the gym. They actually lead us to Mr. Alton's cave, so this was considered a connector in our randomizer. So. We decided to go to Mombasa City and fight Ingo and Emma outside the subway station. Since this is a double battle with Nate, we can actually use our Herdia and his mons to take down Ingo and Emma's last Pokemon, which was Boulder. And we can actually go into the subway station where there's multiple wharfs for us to explore. Going anti-clockwise, we can actually explore all of the warps in order. We find the Zorok, which leads us to End Castle. But End Castle is just a warp towards Route 5 that we already have uh, the place for. So we go to the next subway station, which leads us to the outside of the shopping mall. Now, it would be ideal if we got inside of it, but unfortunately not. The next warp got us to Victory Road, and then the next warp got us to the inside of a Plasma Frigate Teleporters. Now one of these rooms are really important because it brings out more warps, same as this one that we just found. It brings us a lot of warps that we can explore later on. The next teleporter led us to a Pokemon Center, which is pretty much a dead end. On the penultimate warp, we actually get to, through to a teleporter which leads us to Route 18. Now Route 18 doesn't really have much for us because we need Surf to actually continue. But since then, we go to the last warp which leads us to Route 16. And this has two warps for us to explore, but as we're still laying the foundations for our warps, we decided to head back to Castalia City. Now, this part of Castalia City I went to led us to Dragon Spiral Tower, where there's a lot of puzzles that we have to go through just to see the next warp. We hop over a few steps and go towards the staircase, which leads us to the exit. Now, this exit leads us to Pinwheel Forest that actually is a great warp for us in the future. As our final warp, we go over to this part of Castalia, which leads us to Wellspring Cave which only has one other warp, which is limited by Surf. The second hour, trying to find as many foundation warps as we can. The second hour begins exploring more of Castalia City. We get to the part of Victory Road that I really wasn't sure about. And we go to the next part of Castalia, which leads us to Nacreen City. Nacreen City has a lot of different warps that we can explore, so I decided to start off with actually exploring one of these warps. We head over to the museum, which leads us to Route 4 that we explored before in Aspersia. So we have two different warps that lead over to here. So I decide to go to the top part of this house, which leads us to the Drifel City Bridge. Now, this is a direct way of going to Drifel, but we head towards the Pokemon Center, which leads us to Marvelous Bridge. This has a very interesting place, because this is where we can go Cresselia. The Lunar Wing that was given to us before is now starting to react. This brings down Cresselia that we can actually encounter, 
and we make a save state just beforehand before encountering this. This would be a really good Pokemon if we would be able to catch it. We have a Herdia just throwing Pokeballs and eventually we just keep failing the Cresselia encounter. We don't have a way of damaging it and especially at full HP at level 68, it's very difficult to catch this in just a Pokeball. So after many attempts we decided it's best we leave Cresselia alone and we go ahead to the next part of the warp at the end of the bridge. I realized that the guy at the bridge can give us a magic card for 500 poker dollars which we can afford. So we decide to get that and head to the end of the warp where we can get to a different location. Unfortunately for this we get to Twist Mountain and this part of Twist Mountain is a literal dead end so we can't really do much from here apart from mark it off as a dead end and move on. We go back to Nacreen City and we decided to go back into the museum. Now the museum has uh, the warp over to Route 4 that we previously explored and especially here we can actually start exploring some of the warps. I thought Maybe we can go past the Crossle Squad, but apparently we cannot because Chorus is on the other side of it and we can't really get his device and trigger the event. So we go over to this warp instead, which gives us a path to reverse a mountain, but this was a one way. So eventually this led us to a part of Twist Mountain, which was also a one way. And eventually this led us to Humalau City, which is a great warp to have. And at an hour and 18 minutes into the speedrun, we tried to see if we can explore more of Humalo instead of trying to just go back over and seeing the other warps. So I go towards the gym, which leads us to Relic Passage, which just has a bunch of items that we can collect. But it doesn't really have much for us. So we go towards Human Life Tunnel, which leads us to the Giant Chasm. Now the Giant Chasm has an event that takes place in which Getsis is under control of Kieran. And he's about to kill us, so that's not very ideal for our speedrun and it's taking a lot of time. So we get saved by N, and eventually Kieran and Reshiram form, and this amazing cutscene forms. But we knew our fate because even though when we have Herdia and Tepig, we were just not going to be able to cope with defeating Getsis. And it's not really a necessary part of the speedrun to actually defeat him. So we eventually just wipe and it was time for us to just move on from this area and not look back. We spawn back at the subway station and decide we need to explore the insides of the Plasma Frigate teleporters. Now, one of these teleporters actually led us to Chantel, which is one of the Elite Four members that we needed to find. It was one of the most important warps that we have found because she is the first Elite Four. And since we have to do every gym and Elite Four in order, so it's very good that we found this early. The other teleporter led us to Mistralton City. This part of Mistralton City has a cutscene with Professor Juniper that gives us the Master Ball. Now the Master Ball can be used for Cresselia or Heatran that we have found earlier and we decided to head back towards Reversal Mountain but I realized it's a warp randomizer and that's not the correct pathway to actually get to Heatran. Since this is black and white too, this is not the actual gym and I accidentally mark it off as finding a gym, but it technically is not and we decide to go back to this house next to the Pokemon Center. This leads us to Village Bridge, which has a bunch of different warps that we can use. The first house we enter leads us to Victory Road and we go south of the exit to get to the inside of the daycare where there's a rare candy that we can use to evolve a Herdia. Now that we have a stronger Pokemon in our arsenal, we can actually progress through the difficult areas where there might be higher level Pokemon that we couldn't actually fight before. Next part of Village Bridge was fighting this old man who has a 999 win streak, but we quickly end him with our newly evolved Stoutland, and it was a really easy battle with reversal. It took a lot of turns for us to get to this low HP, so the reversal is a max damage move, and we can access the other part of Village Bridge and its encounters. This part of Village Bridge gets us to one of the inside corridors of Castalia City. One of the more important warps that we found here was a warp to Opelucid City. This allows us to visit a different area and also see all of its warp in the future, so we noted it down on our tracker, 
The third hour, finding all the rest of the warps. We begin by exploring Driftfell City through the Nimbasa pathway that we found earlier. We go over to the Pokemon Center, which leads us to Undela Bay, which is a great warp to have for the future. The next warp leads us to one of the Plasma Frigate teleporters. We nimbly dodge one of the Plasma Frigate grunts and go over to the Pokemon World Tournament. Now, this triggers a cutscene where we actually enter the Pokemon World Tournament, but we actually don't have to do any of it. This made me think that since the Plasma Grunt just walked past us, that would we have uh, would have access to the top deck of the Plasma Frigate, but apparently we don't, and we go back through this tunnel, leading us to the Royal Unova, which is a great warp to have. We go back to the Plasma Frigate teleporters, which leads us to a part of Twist Mountain that we can go through, which leads us to Dark Dragon Spiral Tower. Specifically, just the north of Icarus City, which has access to a lot of different warps and areas that we can explore. The first house we explore in Icarus City leads us to Flockissy Town, where Aldo is standing right in front of us, waiting for us to do a little cutscene and a task for him. But I decide it's probably best if we go back and go towards the gym. This leads us to a dark cave that we have to go through to go to the other side and fully clear this warp. We can do this quite easily and following the cave wasn't too difficult. We managed to find the exit and eventually we got over to Lacanoso Town which is a great warp to have and Bianca and Professor Juniper are standing right next to us. I try to escape through but eventually it made me forced to go through this cutscene. Now this cutscene is not really important at all and it's just kept here because this game is just open to us as the warp randomizer is and we don't really necessarily have to do any of this. Eventually we go over, talk to Granny and after that's done we head over outside which leads us to Route 21. I walk past and get back over to Adela Town. Now this is great. But I didn't realise that there was a rival battle in front of us that we had to battle through. Now that we have a Stoutland in our team, we can actually progress through quite easily. Our rival wasn't too difficult. Since we have Stoutland, we can actually do a lot of damage. Especially being over leveled and the rival battle is only level 40s, we'll easily be able to take down Hugh and progress through the connector that was blocking us beforehand. So. This made us so we don't have to worry about a huge battle here anytime soon and we can actually see what this warp takes us to. We'll head through the connector which leads us to the underground part of the dream yard. Now this leads us to uh, a house inside which is a one way towards the bottom part of the plasma frigate this time. We start by going through the middle staircase which leads us to the Pokemon League. Pokemon League has four different warps that you can go through. I decide to go to the one that leads us to Chantel usually. This led us to a part of Victory Road that you normally don't really go to, but it has one warp at the end that we can go through, and eventually it leads us to the shopping mall where we can actually get more items and Pokeballs to be able to catch maybe Cresselia or Heatran. Now we already have a Master Ball for one of those mons, but now we can get some healing items and also extra Pokeballs if we need. This is really good because we don't actually have any gyms that we have completed, therefore we can't use a regular Pokemon Center to buy these items. So having the shopping mall access allows for that, and plus, we can come back to it anytime if we needed to prepare for the Elite Four. After we've done shopping, we head over back to Cumulatown, where we take the warp to Verbank City. The first area led us to a Pokemon Center, the second area led us to the east side of Nobasa City, which we couldn't access before. We go over towards the ferris wheel where this guy was dancing in front. So, I guess we had a battle with him, and then eventually we got into the ferris wheel together, which was a very cute moment, but although this wasted a lot of time, it was a very nice break to have as we ended our journey on the ferris wheel. I go to the front of the Pokemon's gym and we see this man who's blocking the door. I decide it's best if we go back to the old gym and complete everything inside. So I decide to go through all of the gym, get to the end point where usually you need to just talk to a lady at the end who's usually the gym leader, but now in black and white too, that's different. After doing all that, we find ourselves in the giant chasm. We head over to the left side exit of the giant chasm which leads us to right outside the gym that we needed to go through. So conveniently we didn't need to do all of that and we go back to Verbank City 
and we head towards the north of Burbank City next to the connector where we have an ex transceiver call with our mother. Now, some strange things happened and our faces are missing. This is not really what I expected from this call, but we go past and we get access to the Pokemon Center again. We still had a bunch of areas to explore in Drifel City, one of which would led us to Charge Stone Cave. Now, this has a great warp, although it only has one different pathway that we could take to go past. So we go over to the end of it, which leads us to a part of Castalia Sewers. Now, this part of Castalia Sewers can lead us to a battle with the Team Plasma Grunts, although my rival was missing and I couldn't really see him. But we got into the double battle and since we have our herd here, a big dog was able to take down these two Pokemon and we were able to easily clear this out. We got our HM for strength from our invisible rival Hugh and we can actually access different warps that we weren't able to before that were blocked behind HM strength. So we go over to the north bit of Castalia sewers which leads us to Reversal Mountain. This is just a one way path down to uh, this is only a one-way passage down through Reversal Mountain, which leads us to November Town. I go to the bottom right house of November Town, which leads me to the entrance of Route 16, which we've already explored, but now we can go to the bottom left house of November, which gets us to the connector of Relic Castle, what? which is particularly for Volcarona, but we can't really access Volcarona because it's a warp randomizer, so we land at the beautiful white forest and we admire some of the views here. I love this city actually. This is probably one of my favourite parts of Pokemon White 2 and the atmosphere just feels very natural and nice. The fourth hour, making our way to find all the gym leaders in the game. We start off the third hour by exploring a bit more of Drifel City. We go to the bottom bit of the market and to my surprise leads us to the third gym. This is the first gym that we have actually found, unlike the bolt badge that we have found earlier. That wasn't actually a gym, that was just a portion of the old gym that we had found. So I'm quite happy about this. At the 3 hour mark we should have found more gyms, but we are making progress now and we can go ahead onto the left side of the market. That leads us to another part of Celestial Tower. Now this part is a bit easy and we actually get through to one of the most important routes in the game. You'll see why this is the most important route later. Anyways, we head over to this house which leads us to the bodyguard that we were in front of before in Aspersia and knowingly this actually led us back to Aspersia. Since we're back at square one, we decide to go back into Route 13 into this different house that we haven't explored yet. We get to Tube Line Bridge, which coincidentally leads us to Route 8. Route 8 has an interesting warp. It gets us to a one way that I have never seen before in White 2, but this eventually leads us to a part where we're back at home. This wasn't actually our house. This was the house of our friend two years ago that Bianca knows, but we're not here for her. Unfortunately, she's got confused with another one of her sons or daughters, and we are actually going ahead past this to go up the staircase, which is a teleporter, which leads us to a dead end in Twist Mountain. Although that was a waste of time, we head back to Icarus City, and we go to this house above the Pokemon Center, Unknowingly, this would be an important warp for us in the future. We get to the actual electric gym leader for Bolt Badge. This hour has started on a great note as we have found two gyms. We head to the house on the bottom left which leads to one of the Palasma Frigate teleporters. We head on the bottom one which leads us to one of the Elite Fours. So back to back we have found two important warps and Caitlyn is awaiting us on that warp. The last two teleporters here didn't really lead us to anything, so we decided to go back to the north of Castalia City, which leads us to Seaside Cave. We head over to the bottom route, which has a teleporter for us to go through. We have to do this battle against Rock and Roller, but it leads us to our next Elite Four member, Marshall, which is insane, because we now are on a grind to find all the Elite Fours very early on, and so is Iris. Another part of the Plasma Frigate 
leads us to Relic Passage. Now this is just below one of the other exits. So we head through to the puzzle as we have strength now. And now we can head to a part of Lacanosa Town that we couldn't access before because it was blocked by Professor Junifer. We go over to the Pokemon Center, which leads us to the Jet Badge. So now we have three gym badges that we can actually go to, but we're yet to find the first gym so we can actually progress on to the game. We head over to Opelousa City on the bottom right connector, where Iris is awaiting us to yap. But we don't need to know anything important from her, and we head over to the connector the north part of Castalia City. Now this part leads, that us, leads to us to another to... part of Castalia City, and so we head over to the opposite side of the Castalia Cones, which leads us to the Driftville City Gym. Now, I wasn't sure if this was just a different connector to the gym, but I did make sure by going down through the elevator, which it did indeed lead us to the gym. The fifth hour, nothing but a gym and Cynthia? Off by exploring the last warp in November Town. This luckily led us to the second gym leader that we needed to find. Now we're only three gyms away from finding all three gym leaders and we can actually progress through the game completely. Our next objective was to get Heatran. Since we got the Master Ball from Professor Juniper in Mistralton City, we can encounter Heatran and be able to catch him in our Master Ball. Since Heatran is an essential Pokemon to have, especially for the later gyms when they're really high level, we have to rely on Heatran for a lot of the battles, especially now with our Stoutland, we have two Mons that can take care of most of the gyms. But it doesn't mean much when we haven't found the first gym yet. So we go over to Strite and Sea, which leads us to the Dream Yard section. We get past the trainers and we get to Cynthia. I wasn't ready for this. I selected no, in desperate need to get out of here. But instead, I was left with finding Cynthia and battling Cynthia as well. Although my recent edition of Heatran, it was a really difficult battle, especially when Spiritomb took a lot of time to just kill. And so Garchomp was our last remaining mon that swept us, and we blacked out. Hour 6, finding the last few important warps. We decided to visit Zorark again near Ents Castle, and we get to Route 5. This actually got us the TM for Fly, and I usually haven't done this before, and I should have done it earlier. But now that we have access to Fly, we can use this to explore all the different locations and Pokemon centers that we have or haven't found. And visiting these locations means that I don't have to always find the different warps for. So I decided to head back to Humalau City, and explore this one hut that I didn't explore before. This led us to Drayton's gym, which is the seventh gym leader, and we are making more progress now. But we still needed to find the Humalau City gym, and also the first gym to be able to progress. We head back over to Pinwheel Forest, which leads us to Twist Mountain. This eventually led us to the entrance of Victory Road. Since we have the HM for strength, we can progress through the victory road and lead us to the exit. This exit actually leads us to Grimsley, which is an Elite Four member and one of the final ones that we needed to find. We mark him off and it was time to go back to the Plasma Frigate, which one of the doors led us to the champion Iris. Now Iris is the last bit of the Elite Four that we needed to find and we can actually progress on and find a warp towards her for the future. It took us a while afterwards to find anything, but the penultimate area that we found was the Humalau City Gym. And we go through this connector in Twist Mountain, which is the Humalau City Gym. Day 2, the hunt for the first gym. After a long night's rest, we headed back into our warp randomizer and decided that after a few bits of research I needed to do to find where this last gym could be, and it was actually in one of the areas in Mistralton City that we didn't actually explore. The Celestial Tower entrance that we marked off earlier was actually 
the first gym and I felt so relieved. This was the first time in nine hours that we actually found the most important warp in the game to progress through and make ourselves known as a black and white to warp randomizer winner. So this is the start of our journey to defeat all eight gym badges and elite four members. The first gym was pretty easy. With their level 11 lily pups and pack rats, we were able to take down Cheren pretty easily. And we finally got the first gym badge and we can progress through the speed run. The second gym badge, Roxy, was pretty easy with our Heatran. We take down all of her mons with a couple of lava plumes and we have now gotten the second gym badge of the speed run. Berg is our third gym leader and it was an easy sweep with Heatran against his bug types. We got the insect badge and we are ready to move on to the next gym. Gym leader Elisa was also the same story, very easy to get through with our Heatran as they're really low level and it was a pretty good sweep. So we've now obtained the fourth gym badge and we are halfway there. Clay the fifth gym leader was a bit trickier but even then at level 30 our Heatran was able to outspeed and Oko everything in his gym and the Excadrill had no chance so now we have the boulder badge and now we can head on over to Skylo's gym, where this was a very similar story, where Heatran just bodies the Swoobats, the Swanners, and the Skarmories with ease. Although with Sturdy, it took us a little bit longer to kill the Skarmory. Either way, we have now gotten the 6th gym badge, and we are headed to our 7th gym. Drayden and his dragons were a lot scarier as they're catching up in levels and our Heatran doesn't have a lot of PP left after battling all the trainers from before. But we take care and I forget that Flygon has levitate normally so he dragon tailed us into our Pelipper that we caught earlier that has surf and fly. But Stoutland takes care of the Haxorus and now we have gotten our 7th gym badge. Before we battled the next gym which was a water gym at a very high level we decided to catch Cresselia. And since we got an, our Ultra Balls from the supermarket earlier, we can catch Cresselia. The time was paused right now because the game did crash beforehand, so we tried to be fair with it. It was time to take on the 8th gym leader Marlon, and Heatran pretty much take out both of the first two mons, Caracosta and Waylord. Waylord was a bit of a tricky one as he leveled up a lot, but Jellicent, however, was very tricky, and with Recover and the Burn, it took us a while, but Cresselia eventually took down the Jellicent after it healed multiple times, and now we have the 8th Gym Badge and ready to battle the Elite Four. It was time that we defeat Chantel, the first Elite Four member of the Warp Randomizer, and it was a bit tricky, and Heatran took care of the Cofagrigus decently well and a few lava plumes took it down. Somehow Heatran lived a quad effective earthquake but eventually Chandelure took out uh, Heatran. Our Stantland tried his best until Cresselia came up and defeated the Chandelure. We had a bit of an issue here so we max revived our Heatran and took down Chantel. The first of four elite four members down. The second elite four member that we battle is Marshall. Now He's a bit of a trickier one as we have a Heatran who is a steel type against fighting types so it's going to be really tricky for us to get through this. But Heatran takes down throw very easily. Mien Xiao goes for bounce instead and a Lava Plume takes it down. Lava Plume also takes down the Kelda, and we are left with the Menace Sork who doesn't really die to a Lava Plume. Takes another full restore. We did get a higher roll on our Lava Plume to try to take down Sork. But it was Corselia's job to clean up and we defeated the second elite. We're halfway there on the elite fours and the next one we have is Grimsley. Now this was one of the smoothest elite four battles that we've had. So it was time for Heatran to prove his worth. And with a few lava plumes, Lipard was dead in one shot. Intimidate comes out for Crocodile and hits us with EQ. But Heatran takes it down in two more lava plumes and it was Scrafty's time to die. We get the burn and it was time for Bishop to also meet the fate of Lava Plume and that was Grimsley down. Next, the sleeping beauty of Caitlyn, one of my favourite Elite Four members and this battle went pretty smoothly as well. Musharna was an easy kill with two Lava Plumes but it did go for Yord so we were put to sleep. 
However, Reuniclus wasn't a threat, and with a burn, we take it down in two hits. Gothitelle was, however, a bit of a trouble, and especially after a couple forest stores, we take down Gothitelle in three more lava plumes, and Sigalith was left behind, where two more lava plumes take it down, and Caitlyn, the last Elite Four member, was taken down. Fortunately for us, we don't actually have to use the warp that we found for Iris before, and we can actually use the staircase to just get up to Iris. I went to see Iris on her throne, waiting for us to defeat her, and she doesn't know what we're expecting. However, we needed to do some prep beforehand. Since Heatran was very low from our battle previously, we used a Hyper Potion, and now it was time for us to battle Iris. The light shun. She welcomed us, and now it's time for the ultimate battle to defeat this warp randomizer. It took us so long to get here. Over 11 hours on the timer, and the battle has commenced. Light versus Iris. With six mons all around level 60, our first mon that we had to deal with was Hydreigon. We lead Heatran, and it was a pretty easy couple of iron heads. We use that and we get a flinch on the first turn. Another iron head takes it down to red, but we get surfed and critted, but Heatran was able to take that and a forest door comes from Iris. We go for another three iron heads to be able to take down Hydreigon and now it was time for Agron to come out. Now that's surprising because we have earth power from uh, for the Agron, so this was an easy one shot, and now we have a Haxorus to deal with. This Haxorus was really tough, and we go through out speed and earth power, get it to orange, but EQ takes us down. It was now time for Cresselia to come out and take care of the Haxorus. Cresselia is bulky, but it doesn't have much attack, so this Psycho Cut doesn't actually kill. We go for another Psycho Cut as we tank another X Scissor and we take down Haxorus. Now that we have a Drodigon, we use Moonlight to heal back all of our health and we outspeed. A couple of Rock Slides ain't killing us at all, so we get back to full health. I decide it's best if we go for Future Sight and E goes for Dragon Tail. We get pivoted out into Pig Knight. But we decide to just sack it off and it goes for a focus blast just to kill us off. We go back now into Stoutland who can take care of the Drodigon. We go for a couple strengths and it will take two or three more hits to take down the Drodigon easily. So now we have Lapras to deal with. Lapras, we could have used Reversal on it, but Strength was stronger since Reversal is based on damage uh, depending on how low we are. So, we go for a Giga Impact after we wake up, luckily, and we one-shot the Lapras, and now for Iris' last Mon. Iris goes for a Rock Slide to kill our Stoutland, and it's time for Cresselia to come out and take care of this Archaeops. A rock slide makes us flinched, so we try to get a moonlight off, and we do. We get to full health, and with Cresselia living, we now have a chance to go for a future site now. A future site will be able to help us clear through for any other mons that we have, and two psycho cuts comes through, plus the future site. And finally, after 11 whole hours, we have defeated Champion Iris and we can be the winners of our Warp Randomizer. After such a struggle, just trying to find the first gym, making sure every warp is correct that we mark down, and essentially it becoming my mistake of not marking off the correct path to Celestial Tower for the first gym and taking us now 11 hours to beat this game. We get our award for defeating the Warp Randomizer, and now Iris taking us to the Hall of Fame, where now we can record ourselves as a winner. We have done it. After 10 hours, 55 minutes, we have finally conquered the impossible that I thought was this warp randomizer and we're not done yet we lost to cynthia just before this in the midst of everything 
we still had one battle to take down, and that is Cynthia. We we head back to a dream yard where we now battle Cynthia. Heatran is our lead, and with two lava plumes, we're able to take down Spiritomb. But Garchomp, who is very much a threat to us, we can now use our Cresselia to take down Garchomp. And with a few Hyper Potions and a few Future Sights, we're able to eventually take down Garchomp with Moonlight and Psycho Cut and Future Sights. Now it was Heatran's time to kill the Glaceon. Milotic was a big issue for us, as water kind of hurts our entire team. So we had to rely on healing Cresselia and making sure that Stoutland can just do a few chippies. So after some Psycho Cuts, rests from Milotic, this was a drag to just kill the Milotic. And eventually we just lost PP uh, on our Psycho Cuts. So Future Sights plus some revives plus some more Hyper Potions. We can finally let Heatran just Earth Power away and hopefully kill the Milotic. Now it's just Lucario with a Lava Plume and Togekiss left as the last Mon. We Hyper Potion up, we do another Lava Plume to take it almost down to half. We keep healing, keep healing, Lava Plume and a Burn and now we have defeated the Warp Randomizer. Our journey has ended.